what we're going to do now is wedge these in position and then have a look at this front part and get it turned round the corner. Okay, what we're going to do is cut some wedges that we're going to use. All we're going to do is cut strips of lead like this. There's some scrap pieces about that we found when we were doing that. 15 mil, something like that, depending on the size of the joints. Roll it round till you get it about the size of the joints. These are the joints where they're right chopped out. There we are, look. Something like that should do. All you need to do, you can get some clips now, I believe they sell stainless steel clips you can do the same with, but uh, we'll come at that. What we're going to do, we've got the lead wedges, just made those, we're going to put them in the joints just to hold the lead. Give them a bit of a taper on them, make sure you're back in position, and then put the wedge in. What you can do, if you use it with an old chisel here, don't use the end. You're not trying to expand it like a waste to lift the chimney up. What you're trying to do is just compress it in the chimney. So we're going to the side of it. So in this particular case. Put our wedge in. One other thing we always do, um, you've got a flat bolster, it's not quite flat enough, but I'll demonstrate with this. Put it on there. Just to make sure that the lead's right down. As you can see, by doing that, it's vibrated the wedge to come loose. All we do, right, putting the wedge in. Now when you're doing this, be careful. Because some people go a bit overboard and get chisels and all sorts and what you find is the joint across here splits all the way and the chimney's half shaking about. So don't go over the top, you're only holding the lead in, you're not holding the weld up. Yeah? Um, on a joint that long, I put two in. Now on the, a lot of these tight joints that we've got, where we've cut it with a disc, it's difficult to get a lead wedge in now. And what we've found that works for us is a copper nail. Put it in. Give it a tap to that point. Just take it below the surface. What I want to do now is just drop onto this front part just to show you how we turn that round. It's most important because obviously this lead needs to go up above this. If you made this a lot shorter you would have found that it wouldn't and then you've got to start sticking bits on or redoing the side again or whatever you, uh, you feel fit. What I would do here, measure down from that course to where the groove is here. You've got a line. That line is telling you where this joint is. And exactly the same as we did before. We're coming back in, until it's time. There you go. Now once you've got that line, just snip that bit. That piece can come off out of the way, and then what we'll do push it round the front. If it's flapping about a bit and you want to hold it still, obviously, determine where you can do it, and perhaps a little now just above that. In that joint. This is going to get cut off later anyway, no problem. Oh, 
what we've got to do now is put our cuts and folds in at the bottom of that joint lines up with that one that lines up with the water line we'll put another one in here put it on the line mark along there there that's a cut I'll put it in red should be black so let's cut that one again mark it so that using the same method as before this one might be a bit tricky because it won't fit in very easily we can turn that with our seaming pliers if we happen to have any or just use our fingers, get it as straight as you can. Get a bit more muck out of there to take that double joint. Take a bit more out if you in doubt. Push it round. Don't get too gun over the dresser. Some people belt it about all over the place, no need for it. It wants to go there and go there nicely. Next thing we're going to do, get one of that right line here, line it up the joints. That's a cut. That's a cut. Pull him again out the way. The dresser is putting the back gasser in place. 